one of the coolest things you guys do, and I think the uh, audience would be really into seeing this, is how you uh, create seamless split screens to fine tune performances to, to Fincher perfection. Um, I know you've, uh, you've got a little example there from Mindhunter. Uh, yeah. and can you just tell us the Zen first? Um, why, why are you doing a split screen? What are the benefits? Sure. How does it uh, enhance the performance? And then actually show the work. Sure. Um, there are a variety of reasons where we might do a split screen. Um, something as simple as a camera uh, while we're shooting multiple cameras at a time, which is very common. Uh, one camera is stationary while another camera uh, may be moving. Uh, and that camera may be itched, uh, etched its way into the frame a little bit. And so we um, might want to crop something out. That's a simple split screen. Uh, a much more complicated one might be where we're actually trying to join two performances together. Whether we may actually be um, tightening up time, changing something slightly so that uh, the story is actually being revealed in a slightly different way than it may have been captured on camera. Um, these are all requests that will come through from Kirk and David, and we will uh, figure out ways to join the frame together uh, from multiple takes or even just condensing. Uh, maybe if two characters are talking back and forth when you're shooting, you may not have them stepping on each other's lines so that you have the freedom for mixing, and we then may go in and tighten that together so that their interaction becomes exactly at the pace that Kirk and David are looking for. Um, Kirk is, is very uh, fluent with um, doing this uh, while he's editing. And so that's one of the um, freedoms of being able to work in Premiere is that he can do it right in the timeline, which I will show you in a second. Um, and then a lot of times Kirk will send it over to us. Uh, he might do it very quickly and move on just to keep the story going and then say, hey, I have a bunch of splits to clean up. Um, and then we will jump on those and maybe refine them uh, in Premiere or even take them into After Effects, uh, which is a very seamless project uh, process. Um, and that way, the pace of the story, uh, which is really the whole point, um, it can come down to things like continuity too, um, and not distracting you from the story, but the pace of the story gets perfectly dialed in beyond production, exactly the way that David and Kirk are looking to tell the story. Right. So are you able to call that up? Sure. Uh, what I'm going to show is an example from Mindhunter. Uh, and this is a scene, if anyone's familiar with it, where Holden and Tench are interviewing Charles Manson. Uh, and Holden, who has become enamored with Charles Manson, has brought a book about the Manson murders with him, uh, which he claims is about research. But he's also, in a weird way, a little bit of a fan. Um, and at the end of the interview, Charles Manson takes the book and just starts writing a note in it for Holden. Um, and you can see here, if I, we're, I'm looking at video layer one and video layer two down here, uh, which is the split that's already been complete. But if I hide video layer two and we just look at the original take, uh, Charles Manson asks Holden for his sunglasses and Holden does gift him the sunglasses. And if we look at the original take, you can see that Manson passes Holden the book that he's just written in while Holden is passing the sunglasses over. Um, and that has been split so that, uh, so that Manson no longer passes the book. There, we could, we could go into the variety of reasons to do this. Like I said, it could be continuity. It could be that we don't actually want to see Manson pass over the book. We may, by passing the book, it may distract from Hench's next look at Holden. There are story concerns um, one way or another. Uh, the choice was made to remove or split out uh, the passing of the book. And so what's been done here is uh, the timing of Manson writing in the book has been shifted so that he no longer actually slides the book over. Uh, you can see it's done right here in Premiere with the mask on D2. There's the mat you can... Yeah. <laughs> You can see right here, there's the actual mask that's been drawn. Um, and uh, you can also see that Holden's arm is poking out right here, if everyone can see that, poking out through the mask. You know, maybe that mask should actually be down like this, which we can just edit right in Premiere uh, to clean up. But if there's a little bit of roto to do, uh, we will actually take this over into After Effects. Um, and that's a very simple process by which we just duplicate both layers 
uh, select them both, right click on both layers of the split, say replace with after effects composition. And uh, we work with uh, dates so that everything stays organized by the time it was done. So I'm just going to call this 20, 20, 11, 13, once the I. Jennifer was doing it, it would be Jennifer's initials. Uh, and you can see that right as I send that over, uh, it After Effects goes through the process of building it exactly as we had this, this split comp built in our timeline. So it plays exactly as it should play. Mask is already present. If I need to tweak the mask, I can go in and tweak the mask. I can roto it if I need to. I can adjust whatever I may need to. When that's done, I hit save. Back to Premiere. Break that in the timeline. Right click and say render and replace. The benefit of doing that, I'm not going to actually render it, uh, but the benefit of doing that is that this bakes down the After Effects comp into a quick time so that it puts much less weight on the system to play rather than having to render it live through After Effects all the time, which it can do. You can leave this as a live After Effects comp and uh, make modifications in the After Effects comp in real time, which will propagate over to Premiere in real time. Um, but we'll render it, and then if we ever need to go back, we can right click and it's going to be disabled right now, but we can say uh, restore unrendered. And that will take the rendered comp and bring back the original After Effects project, which we can then jump into and create modifications. And we'll go through and do this throughout the entire show, the entire movie, and uh, build all the refinements in that are necessary to get the movie, uh, the story particularly dialed in. And some of them are much more complicated. I'm not going to dive too much into this one. But in this uh, scene here, this is uh, Nancy Tench when. Uh, uh, and his wife, who's about to call her son over uh, to talk to the social worker. And we wanted to have her son, Brian, respond immediately to when she waves her hand. Um, and you can see here that we have split Brian in so that his motion on the swings stops exactly when she waves. And that's how we do it. Well, that is... Uh... That's literally movie magic. I mean, you make it look simple, but you realize that, you know, so much work goes into each and every shot of what you might think are just simple, locked off shots. Uh, but that's what makes what you guys do so special. Uh, the viewers never consciously seeing it or thinking of it, but yet it just makes the story that much more fluid and draws your eye to where um, your eye needs to go to. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, We've been mentioning the name Kirk Baxter a lot, or Kirk, and when Kirk needs this or that. Um, Kirk is the lead editor. Uh, he's a back-to-back -back, uh, Oscar winner, and uh, that is who Mr. Kirk Baxter is, and he has also been a great part of the process. He's focusing more on the creative side of things, but um, again, wouldn't be here without Kirk. Just been fabulous through the years. Um, okay, so... Speaking of being in current times now, I know even well even prior to COVID-19, you guys developed a pretty reliable process for Kirk Baxter and others to work remotely at times. Um, can, um, Jennifer, can you tell us a little bit about that and how you and then Ben uh, jump in on how you expanded that solution to actually be the core of how you work during the pandemic? Yeah, sure. So. Um, at the time, Billy Peak was our first assistant editor, and he created a workflow using Resilio to sync our projects with Kirk. And so Kirk was working with local drives, and uh, I think at that point we were done shooting, and this was on Mindhunter, so we weren't having to send him dailies. And so Resilio would scan for any modified files and would sync those projects and lock files to us or with us. And so we would get those updated projects pretty quickly, like within a couple minutes. Um, and, and the synced lock files would let us know that Kirk was in the project. And so we wouldn't jump into those projects. Um, and at one point, Kirk also went to Pittsburgh, which is where they were shooting. And so we had to set up a system where we were also syncing media because we were getting dailies. Um, so that was a bit of a bumpy road and we ran into some issues there, but we learned a lot from that and, and that kind of paved the way for, for Ben to expand and create a more robust workflow during, during the pandemic. 
So, yeah, Ben, if you want to talk more about that. Sure. Um, I think one of the benefits before I dive into it uh, from the way that we work uh, is that um, we've always had a mindset of sort of digital freedom uh, in that um, uh, in the way that we work and, and, and having everything sort of be fluid. And, you know, David reviews a lot of his stuff uh, through the PIC system. Um, and, uh, you know, he can bounce between watching it on his iPad to coming into the edit room and looking at it and going between systems and everything isn't locked down to everybody has to be within six feet of each other uh, at the same time. And so uh, we've, we've always sort of looked at how to um, create a robust system rather than one that is tied down. Um, and so uh, we've been putting these in these systems in place before the pandemic. Um, one of those systems was our backup system um, for making sure that we had offsite backups for uh, projects and things like that. And uh, because I dove so deep into that, actually with the people that develop it, um, there were a number of emails that went back and forth. To be able to make that work, I was able to leverage that system, which is called ChronoSync, um, to uh, become our media sync platform for when we had to go remote for COVID. Um, and uh, it, it was very, it actually was a lot more seamless. It took a lot of work, but it was much more seamless than I expected because we had already laid that foundation. Um, basically, the problems that Jennifer uh, detailed with Resilio is that uh, Resilio is very good at syncing small files, but not good at syncing big files. Uh, and so with something like a Premiere production, especially now that the project files uh, are even smaller than they would normally be, um, it can sync things between multiple systems very quickly. Uh, so um, Jennifer and I could essentially be, uh, we could take the, the splits that we were just doing uh, and split up a sequence so that Jennifer was refining half the splits and I was refining the other half of the splits. Um, and then we, she could hit save and when she's done and within five to 10 seconds of her hitting save, I'll have the file on my side, I can then continue to open it. Uh, and work with it, combine it all back together, hit save again, tell Kirk it's ready, and Kirk can just open it up and keep going. Um, and you're in all different parts of the city. Uh, while this uh, is yes, um, we're in all different parts of the city. Um, then with ChronoSync, uh, what ChronoSync does is it's actually, it does multiple different sweeps for media um, and changing files. So, uh, we have a variety of things that could be changing from media itself uh, for, for dailies to um, we just rendered a whole bunch of uh, split screens or stabilizations, or we uh, got the effects delivered that we want to cut in. We got a sound mix that has been received that we want to cut in. Uh, and the complex part of working remotely with that um, is that everyone needs that media. I can't just receive it on my end because then when I send the project, when I tell Jennifer uh, to open it up, if something, if she's going to work inside of it, if I tell her that it's ready, she won't have the media, so a bunch of things will be offline. So we we designed the ChronoSync workflow to be uh, a variety of sweeps so that it is updating the most likely to be changed on a 15-minute basis, and then the stuff that's less likely to change, for example, um, our sound effects library, our dailies. Once the movie's shot, we're not really getting new dailies. So maybe we'll re-render, which we, we call rebaking. We'll re-render a shot um, because we don't. Uh, we want to tweak the way that it was processed um, through our dailies process. Uh, that can be updated overnight. It doesn't affect our editing. And so for the things that affect editing, we update them very quickly. Um, and for the other things, we update them sort of at night at 3 a.m. when no one's working. Uh, and between those two working simultaneously, we were essentially able to fake the way that we work in an office together connected to a centralized server where everybody was able to, uh, you know, the production, one, once everything was set up in the background, the production worked exactly the same way. Russell would open a uh, project and Jennifer and I would see within 10 seconds that it was locked. And, uh, you know, Casey would open up a reel to start cutting in visual effects, and we would all know that Casey was working on the reel and, would, you know, check in with him to see how many VFX were cut in and when we could go in back into real one. <laughs> uh, things, things like that. Um, well, so that, that, yeah, that's how we built the remote workflow. Um, but it fell into place very quickly uh, because we, it was not something that we were creating from scratch. It was something that we were building on top of because that's what we've always done. 
Yeah, I can't even imagine, you know, all, all the time over the years that went into evolving that if you had to all of a sudden do that, um, oh, you know, in a few days. So it's great how a lot of the, the, the foundation and the core of that was already in existence. Uh, also a tribute to how you guys work. I mean, you, you really got it down on, on your workflow and the level of efficiency and collaboration. Uh, it's, it's what makes you guys special.